Hello and welcome to the Unlocked Podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Locke, professional speaker, magician and confidence coach. And quite simply, Unlocked is a journal of self-improvement. I'm talking to the experts, authors and successful people from around the world, as well as sharing my mishaps and magical adventures in my own life too, to unlock the best version of ourselves. My aim is to give you some insight and inspiration so you can unlock the best version of yourself too. Now, if this sounds like your cup of tea, then hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my latest episodes released every Wednesday. Now, relax and enjoy the show. Are you in a career or a job that you really love? Well, if not, then maybe this is the episode for you. This week, I'm very delighted that my fellow masterminder, good friend and TikTok sensation Jake Richings joins me for a conversation on how to find a career that you love. Now, this episode is fantastic. It is a fantastic episode because it's just for you if you are stuck in a career that you don't like, or maybe you might be a young person who's in school, who's ready to leave school, but is unsure of what you want to do with your life. We all know those questions that we all get from a young age of, you have to tell us right now, what do you want to do when you leave school? So if you are unsure or feeling a little bit stuck, then this is the episode for you. In this episode, Jake shares some amazing inspiration that he's been sharing to schools and to teachers and to young people. And he shares three simple steps that's going to help you today to start finding a career that you love. And they are so simple and so easy. It's such a great episode. I'm absolutely honored and delighted that uh, Jake came onto the show. I absolutely love his work. Been following for uh, a long time now. And make sure if you click into the show notes, you can find all the information to uh, find out his TikTok as well, which is absolutely brilliant. But it's a cracking episode. Episode, and this really will inspire you to start thinking about how to find a career that you love. So whether you are a young person or whether you are in a career right now and you feel a little bit stuck and you're not loving it, this is the episode for you. So without further ado, enjoy the amazing episode called How to Find a Career That You Love with Jake Richings. Today's guest is a workshop facilitator, TikTok influencer and partner at Ethos VO. Across all of his work, he engages Gen Z in reaching their potential through work, thus unlocking how to be the best version of themselves. The best part, he's a relevant voice for young people that are only 25. Please welcome my good friend, Jake Richings. Hello, Jake. Hi, Ricky. Yeah, good to see you again. Yeah, how are you? Keeping well? Yeah, I'm doing well. There's a lot of uh, exciting things on my radar at the moment, and I've, I've just had a bit of time as well to take some time off, which has been nice. Fantastic. Well, good to see you, Jake. Um, for those people that, that don't know, we have a mastermind and Jake is one of the members of the mastermind. So we've known each other now for uh, a good couple of years now. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this because I've got to see Jake uh, grow and grow into the, the man he is today, but also the amazing TikTok that he has, which we're going to put some links in the show notes. But if my stats are correct here, Jake, over 55,000 likes and over 4,500 well, 4, followers, and with some videos reaching over 15,000 views, such as the Workplace Red Flag video. That's mental. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's wild to think of those numbers in terms of like actual people and actual individuals that that's made a difference to. You know, I, I know on social media it can be usually vanity metrics where you're like, oh, I've had 100,000 views. <laughs> um, but especially like the the... Um, like the likes and the comments to hear young people commenting on videos which they've spent you know sometimes like 20 seconds watching to say thank you this is helpful or, or like i've done this and this is really good um that to me shows that actually there's a huge amount of value in this short form content that has been just sort of dropped on people's feed and they don't know me um <laughs> so yeah that, that to me is like the big thing more so than the uh the, the numbers in the you know thousands hundreds of thousands yeah, it's, it's fantastic work, and I'm very inspired by um, what I see uh, every day in the TikTok challenges that you do as well. Obviously, Jake, we're here for a, a conversation today uh, all about, obviously, finding careers you love. And obviously, there's a, there's a deeper, uh, more important issue here uh, about young people as well, about finding a career they love. And we're quite young people, and I think we both have wonderful stories about how we've got to where we have. But particularly, I'm very interested in how you've got to this point now. So, Jake, if you wouldn't mind, tell us a little bit about your story, because I know you have a uh, a very interesting story of leaving school to where you got to now. So tell us your story. Yeah. So I, I left school in 2015 um, with no idea what I wanted to do uh, with my life, more so than my career. 
it got to that point where everyone was making decisions around me about university or getting a job, um, seemingly knowing what they wanted to do. And to me, nothing seemed interesting. Uh, and I left school, w- what's called NEAT, uh, which is acronym for not in education, employment or training. I looked at jobs, but I couldn't find any jobs that looked like fun. I looked at university courses, but nothing felt like it was for me. And it made me v- very unhappy with where I was in my life, especially seeing my peers going on to do things that they wanted to do and me just feeling like, oh, Jake, why don't I know? I'm such an idiot. Why, why do I not know my thing? You know, I'm 18 now. I should know. Um, and so I got my first job being a waiter um, because I needed money to pay for my car. Uh, which I hated. <laughs> what then car was job, it, Jake? What car was it? Uh, it was a Toy- Toyota Yaris. Nice. Good, um, yeah. Which was, it was lovely, to be honest. I, I, I called it Sweetie, because every time it went up a hill, I had to tap on it and say, come on, Sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, to, to pay for that. But again, it, it wasn't what I wanted to do, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had a job doing door-to-door sales for a charity. Uh, again, I didn't know what I wanted to do. It wasn't that, but I couldn't find that thing. Um, And I got my first sort of real opportunity um, working in customer service for a heat and ventilation company. Uh, Even though I didn't know what I wanted to do, I'd sort of said to myself, you know, come on, Jake, you're you're a a man now. You're an adult now, a young adult. Just progress in something. Um, If you earn more money, it won't really matter what you want to do. You can do that in your spare time. Um, And I was fortunate that still being a young person, I progressed quite quickly I had opportunities to travel around Europe, um, speaking to company executives and CEOs uh, about things like company culture and company values. And I still wasn't what I wanted to do. It got to the point where I was getting quite good at it, but it wasn't what I wanted to do. And at the same time, I started to struggle with stress and anxiety at work, which it turns out was because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was struggling to see any sort of reason for being there reason for working extra hours when I went home or staying on later or doing more work. Um, I couldn't see any reason for it. And it got so bad, Ricky, that I started waking up in the morning blind with migraines, with these just like debilitating, open my eyes and you can't see anything. Um, And it just happened again and again and again. I'd sit at my desk, open my emails, and then from the center of the screen all the way out, it would just go blurry, so I couldn't do anything. Uh, I did what most sensible people would do. I went to the opticians, I went to the dentist, just see, you know, what's going on in here? Um, I remember actually leaving the dentist with a a, a bizarre sense of pride when she told me that she was the youngest person she'd ever seen with this amount of grinding on their teeth. Wow. Wow. I remember walking out and then thinking, yeah, I must be working so hard if I'm getting this stressed. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it got it got so bad that I, I had to leave and move on. And I remember feeling when I left, again, that sense of, oh, I'm such an idiot. You know, I've thrown everything I've worked for away. I'm st- I still don't know what I want to do with my career. Um, and now I'm back at square one. It wasn't until I, I got a similar role um, doing similar stuff because that's all I'd ever trained for. That's all I had to experience. That instead of asking myself the question, you know, what do I want to do? The question sort of became, well, what, how, how would I work out what I want to do? How would I work out what I'm good at? And over this contract period, I gave myself nine months, which isn't a lot of time, to answer that question. And, and I realized that when you keep asking yourself, what do you want to do? Or what are you passionate about? What are you good at? It doesn't help. You know, if I asked you what's the capital city of Estonia, if you don't know, you don't know, right? <laughs> yeah. But you could work it out. Yeah. And this is how I think careers and, and our own path should be viewed, especially for young people. When I gave myself permission to find out what I wanted to do, the change in me, it wasn't overnight, but I started doing things that I was kind of interested in doing. So I, I managed an esports team because I kind of like esports. That's pretty cool. I designed a, I designed a board game because I thought, well, I like playing board games. Maybe I'd like to design one. I made an app, a video game. I volunteered at a school. Uh, I volunteered at a football club running a, a football team. All of this stuff I just started trying because I thought maybe that's what I want to do. Not because I knew what it was, but because I thought maybe that's what I want to do. Perhaps that's interesting. And 
I didn't realize it at the time, but all of this stuff I can look back on now and say, yes, you know, I liked making a video game, but that doesn't mean I want to be a professional game designer. Yes, I like coaching a football team, but that doesn't mean I have to be a football coach. Instead, I can sort of take the essence from them and say, oh, I like coding because of the creative autonomy. I can do it when I want. I like coaching a football team because of the team talks, you know, that motivation. I like volunteering at a school because of the young people. Those are the elements that I've taken forward into my career now. So after this contract period um, of work, I started sharing this with my friends, you know, what, what was helping me to find purpose or, or what I was good at. And they started telling me that it was useful and that it's helped them make career decisions. So I started sharing that with charities for young people to serve young people. And they started telling me that it was helpful for them. And all of a sudden, this thing that I'd never really thought about became what I started following because I enjoyed it, because I was good at it, and because it was serving so many people. That's kind of rolled in, you know, over the last four years, I've been trying to work this out. And the last two years, I've, I've been doing it. Um, but that's rolled into the, the work I do speaking at schools and, and workshop facilitating that's become the work I do on TikTok now with brands that want to help young people find careers they love um, or with the uh, incubator ethos VO working with young people that are trying to set up their own things. It seems like a thread now that is just so obvious to me. And I'm very fortunate that at 25, it is obvious to me. Um, but knowing that four years ago, it wasn't, I think is the most inspiring thing because that means everyone else can do it. Mm, definitely. There's so many things there, Jay, to unpack there. And uh, there's there's definitely something about the power of uncertainty. It's definitely something that I've shared in my uh, recent episodes about not really knowing what to do. There's something magical about the unknown that has led you to this point. But one thing I particularly wanted to discuss was the idea of this pressure. You mentioned it quite a couple of times about that this frustration of not knowing well, I should know what I you know want to do. I'm 18 years old. Where does that pressure come from? And why was it nine months? What, what, what was the number of the nine? Why did you set yourself just nine months to work it out? Mm. Yeah. So to, to start with the pressure, I, I feel like when we're surrounded by our peers, especially at school who all seem to know what they want to do. Um, so at 18 or, or just before I left school, the majority of my friends were going to university. They could tell me the exact uni they wanted to go to, why they wanted to go there, the thing they wanted to study, what they wanted to do after they'd finished studying. They could tell me that with pretty good detail. Um, some of my friends knew they wanted to get jobs. They could tell me what apprenticeship they were going to or what job they wanted to do. It seemed like everyone else knew what they wanted to do, and I didn't. Um, so I felt in many ways like I was... Um, like behind or that I was stupid or that I wasn't clever enough. Um, not because my grades were any worse, just because everyone knows what they're doing when they leave school and I don't. Um, so I said for a couple of years, I want to do something in music. Um, you know, I've, I've always had music as a hobby. Um, but I knew that I couldn't see myself doing 40 hours a week of music. Uh, I knew that I wasn't good enough really to, to progress that career through university but I couldn't tell you what the path would have been. And so I think for that reason, there's a lot of pressure on an individual because we see everyone else around us doing these things. Um, I don't think it was a particular pressure put on me by uh, teachers or by parents to you know have this thing, aside from the usual pressure of, we want the best for you. Um, but yeah, seeing everyone else have it sorted, it wasn't until I started sharing this, Ricky, with... Um, you know, youth charities or with my friends that I realized actually they didn't have it worked out. They got halfway through university and realized that they don't want to study accountancy and they'd rather do something else. They got halfway through their apprenticeship and realized, actually, I, I don't enjoy this. Like, wh why am I doing this? Um, or I speak to young people that have just about to finish school that don't know what they want to do, but they keep telling people they do because it feels like you have to have an answer. And saying, I don't know, is just not acceptable. Mm. And so that pressure comes from almost a sense of fitting in. Mm. Um, to answer your question, nine months. So the, the contract that I started was maternity cover. Um, some was off for nine months. And I knew when I started this that my experience is just in customer service. Um, my education can't really take me anywhere else. And if it, even if it did, I, I don't know what I would rather do. So I felt very much pigeonholed that, 
this is the only thing I can do unless I figure out something else. So for that nine months, I said, well, let's let's give it a try. Let's try figure out. And worst case scenario is that I have to keep doing work that I hate um, to keep going. Maybe a good scenario is I progress somewhere or move vertically and um, move horizontally. But the ideal scenario is that during this time, somehow, some way, uh, through something that I can't find out on a Google search or by doing an online personality quiz, I find something about me that is actually what I want to follow, what I'm good at, uh, and what I could do for a number of years to come. Hey, it's Ricky here, and I'm just pausing the episode really quickly to remind you that you can watch video episodes with all guests, receive bonus behind-the-scenes content and extra episodes, all for as little as just the price of a cup of coffee. You can do this in the Unlocks Patreon community, but rather than me tell you why you should join, here's one of our Patreon members and what they have to say. Why do I think being a patron of the Unlock podcast is awesome? Ricky. That's it. I've known Ricky for a very long time. We worked together back in the day at Argos. He's always been supportive, engaging, and one hell of a magician. Still don't know how he does half that stuff. This podcast is everything that Ricky is all about, and being a patron, I get to support him in this journey, and I get to learn some really useful stuff along the way. We get some exclusive content as patrons, and it's so worth missing out on a coffee each month. So come and join us. You won't regret it. So just like Ant, to get involved, head to patreon.com forward slash the Unlock podcast, or click the link in the show notes and come and join the fun. Now, back to the episode. Yeah. You know what, again, there's so many things there that I, uh, I resonate with you there about when, uh, as, as frequent listeners of this episode will know that, you know, I, I kind of, I, I called it coasting because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Uh, and I just, I, I was in sixth form and you had to do work experience in our sixth form. And I'd already had like a job as a 16 year old. So I just said to my boss, look, can I just stay here? There's no point in me going somewhere else. Can I just stay here? We'll do something different. He said, yeah, we'll, we'll stick on the till for two weeks, do something different. And I got that money after the two weeks and I thought, this is quite good, this, isn't it? I'm just going to do this. Because I remember the same thing, like when my friends went to uni, I couldn't work out how do, how do they know? Why do they know what they want to do? Uh, and and I also felt like, am I stupid or am I am I thick because I'm not going to university? Because that, that, there was a, a sense of just teachers telling us, uh, UCAS points, I don't know if that's still something that still exists mm-hmm. now, but UCAS points, you know, you've got to look into it, do it. And I, but, but I don't know. I don't know what I want to do, you know. Um, particularly as well, this is remind me of um, the, the parenting podcast, Bill Bailey. He was interviewed on there and uh, he talked about his son recently about um, over the last two years when obviously the pandemic happened in 2020, there was that huge mix up where they were going to get this algorithm to work out what your GCSE grade, final grade would be. And, you know, his son said that, Dad, for, for like 10 years, I've been told this is the most important part of your life, the GCSEs. You have to make sure that whatever you do, you work hard. It's the most important part of your life. And then obviously they they messed it all up. It's probably the, the cleanest word I can say. Uh, and through that algorithm. And he said, Dad, I've been told for 10 years that this is the most important part of my life and it's been messed up now. So what do I do now? You know, and, and again, that kind of reflects into, doesn't it? You know, where does this pressure come from in, ter- in terms of the education system as well about, you know, what what are the avenues we can go down? I mean, there, there was no clear thing of saying, Ricky, you could be a professional magician one day. <laughs> that wasn't a, a conversation or a professional speaker. So th- there's obviously conversations here about how do we engage young people here with the futures. But also I'd like to add in about this measure of success. It sounds like you had a similar thing to me. For, for me, my measure of success was I've got to work up the ladder. I've got to go higher because that's that's all it is. And then it's going to be money and then it's going to be car and status and stuff. But do you do you think that the measure of success to young people is uh, skewed by probably what we're seeing on social media or even what we're being told? Hmm. Good question. So I, I feel like ultimately it's a case of not not necessarily knowing what you want to do again or, or where you want to go. So I'll give you an example. When I had the job interview for my customer service, they said, what motivates you? Um, so I obviously said money because <laughs> um, I need to keep my little Toyota Yaris sweetie going. Um, but I look back on that now and think, what, why did why was it that? You know, aside from being able to pay the bills and hang out with friends, what, why was money motivating me? And then I can look at the reason why 
money motivated me. Um, and this is something I'll touch on later, but ultimately it's never about the thing. It's about the reason. The reason I said money was because I wanted to hang out with friends. I wanted to do experiences that I hadn't done before. Um, like things like skydiving, um, which I wanted to do. Um, but it was also because I didn't have a, a better answer because I didn't want to progress because I didn't really care about that because I didn't want to be doing this for a living. Um, and I felt like saying, figuring out what I want to do with my life motivates me is probably a bad idea in a job interview. Um, but it's never about the thing you, you say motivates you. It's always about the reason why. And I feel like for young people, if you don't know what that thing is, what can you default to? Well, okay, I'd love to work for a company that pays me loads of money, or I'd, I'd love to have influence over lots of things through responsibility. I'd love to work for a company that makes a difference. Um, the things that we almost default to without thinking, okay, well, why Why is that the thing that I'm saying? Um, I think you're right in that social media does have an impact on that. But, you know, I, I remember um, one of my first bosses um, was one of these people that had like quite a nice car, and he made people feel like oh you could become like me and have this nice car or have this nice like apartment um if you progress and work hard and those sorts of things and i think as a 19 year old yeah that was interesting for me i was like yeah that would be cool you know imagine how cool i'd look in a bmw and you know with a, an apartment like that um but i think there's a, a certain sense of you get a bit older and you're like okay well why did i want that why is that actually motivating for me um that maybe you don't have or, or that you certainly learn when you have more experience in the world of work compared to the world of education because of the questions you're being asked. Yeah, great answer. Thank you. So, Jake, there's obviously people who listen to this podcast who um, are young people, but also there are people that have young children or young kids who are probably going through that now. You know, the time of recording this, we are obviously in the summer holiday. So, um, you know, there's people probably thinking about what's coming up in the next couple of years, what they're going to be doing. Um, so, so what can we do to to start engaging young people who, who might be having, asking those questions themselves about, I, I really don't know what to do. I'm being asked all these questions at school about my future and the university or uh, wherever I want to go, and I don't know. What, what can we do, Jake, to start engaging these people? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's a, it's a really interesting um, area because how do you engage someone to do something when they don't want to do anything? Or if, if you don't know what you want to do, how do you start doing anything? Um, and I feel like at the moment we've got quite a high, um, not necessarily a high bar, but a high, what I call barrier to entry, which is what do you want to do? What is the thing that you want to do and how can you do it? I remember when I did work experience and maybe it was the same for you as well. Work experience was never labeled as something to test out and to try what you might be interested in. It was have a go at what you think you want to do. Give that a go. And it's and two weeks away that. from the teachers, really. Yeah, yes, they're yeah. gone for two weeks all week. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so it's not necessarily labelled as a, a a try and give things a go. And so, whilst I don't want to talk about like trial and error, there's there's three things I say are like the pillars for engagement for young people: the people, the path, the purpose. Um, and so I'll, I'll briefly touch on it on yeah. them all, but I mean, we can go further on any of them if you like. I, feel, I believe this is something you're you're now talking about, isn't it, called authentic engagement? Is that right? Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah, yeah, please share, please, yeah. Yeah, so with people, um, when I was at school, we had a couple of people that come in to speak about, you know, their career as an accountant or, or their career in law. And what I realized um, when I spent this nine months trying to figure out what I wanted to do was – there's so many people that I could learn from that are like one or two steps ahead of me. Um, I think we often become disillusioned with like these really high mentors that are like super successful or, or amazing in their field. But actually you can learn so much from someone that is one step ahead of you. that has been doing a job for two years um, compared to, to you, if you want to get started in that. And so what I suggest with, with a lot of young people is, what questions would you ask to someone that does a job you think you might be interested in? If you think you want to be a footballer, what questions would you ask to someone that plays Sunday league football and gets paid £100 a week? Mm. Because often we think, oh, what would I ask Kevin De Bruyne? Um, oh, he's the person I'd look up to. But actually, the first step along that path is probably Sunday league. Um, so you can speak to those people. Now, I don't know where um, you know people live or who they know, 
but you could probably get a conversation with a Sunday league footballer if you wanted. Um, you could probably find out, yeah. okay, what, what do they actually have to do to train? How difficult is it? How did they get started? Do you just have to be really good and you get seen by a talent scout or are there things you can do to get started? The best thing is about the, the people is that you can apply it to any career. If you want to get involved in dance, you can speak to someone that is a dancer or does it part-time. If you want to get involved in finance, you can speak to someone that works at your local bank. Um, even for those things that you're not sure you're interested in, you're like, maybe that's my thing. And you either find out, hey, that sounds like something I'm interested in, or actually that's not what I thought it was. Um, and those take you closer to finding out the thing that you want to do. People as a motivator is, is something that fascinated, fascinates me because we've all had a boss that we look up to and we're like, oh, I want to be more like them. And you're more engaged with your work. You enjoy your work more. We've probably also all had a boss that isn't someone we want to be like. We think, God, I don't like them. And so you're less engaged with your work. You enjoy your work less. So finding those people in your own life um, is really important to your own engagement. You, we've all heard the saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. But no one ever tells you that you can change who you know. Yes. So that's the people. Getting young people to have conversations with people and, and enabling them to find out from people that do what they think they want to do. The path is all about the steps you can take day to day to make these ideas reality. Young people are not short on ideas. Um, when I say that I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life, that is true. But I also had hundreds of ideas of what I could do with my life. But I never knew the first step. Yeah. So oh, maybe I want to be a professional esports player. Oh, well, what can I do about that? Maybe I want to have a career writing music. Oh, well, what can I do about that? And so that barrier between actually doing something seems quite high. The path is all about what is the quickest, cheapest, easiest thing you could do today to make that happen. Uh, I had a, a comment actually on my TikTok um, a while ago. Someone said, Jake, how can I become an astronaut? Um, now, obviously, there's a tie-in, one small step, yada, yada, yada. Um, but actually, when you want to become something like an astronaut, something highly aspirational, it's really unclear to know what the first step is. It's true. You know, you can't just send your CV to NASA and, you know, hope, fingers crossed, you get a job. But actually, you could join your local air cadets because every astronaut has to have two years of a pilot's license. That's one thing you could do this week. Or you could go on the NASA website and do the challenges that they put up every week to find out actually if you enjoy doing stuff that astronauts do. There is stuff you can do this week and every week to find out if you'd enjoy the path. I think in education or, or in business or, or as parents as well, we're liable to sort of focus on the destination and say, what would you like to be? Oh, you'd like to be an astronaut. Okay, yeah, that's the end goal. But actually, if you don't like the path, you probably won't like the end destination as much. You know, I'd love to score a goal in the Champions League final, but I don't want to follow the path of being a professional footballer. I don't want to have to go for a run every morning and do weights and, you know, watch my diet really closely. <laughs> All things that you have to do yeah. um, to be a professional footballer. So the path is more so, let's, let's change the perspective of careers from dream career, that's the one thing, to actually if the path is taking me there and I enjoy the path, I'm going to follow that of my own volition engagement and the last thing is purpose and i think i've often been somewhat outspoken about this because i feel like for young people there is this um view that has come from somewhere i don't know where that young people only want to do things that have this really high purpose um and that anything that is just day-to-day -day, um doesn't doesn't change the world, doesn't stop climate change or, or, you know, improve social justice around the world isn't something that engages young people. And whilst it's true that that does engage young people and in their own time they're interested in those things, in our work that doesn't have to be the reason we follow something. Um, so again, it's not about the thing, it's about the reason. Why is it that Ricky has found Ricky's path and does the things he wants to do? What are the hobbies you had in the past and the hobbies you have now actually you can see the trend of what you've done what are the things you enjoyed at school that maybe give you a hint as to what you want to do in the future um so I, like i said i mentioned earlier but i'll give you an example of this like i quite like maths at school um i studied maths if, if i was just to follow the path of like okay what do you want to do oh, i like maths let's do maths 
I might have run a university and studied maths. Um, I might have have a job in statistics or accountancy or engineering or as a maths teacher. Um, I don't know if I'd enjoy that. It sounds quite different to what I do now, so I'm going to assume that I wouldn't enjoy it that much. But if you'd have asked me the reason why I like maths, it was because I got to work on my own. The reason I liked maths was because the teacher was actually really good at helping me when I got stuck. Um, And I can look at all of my hobbies, the reason I like them, the purpose of them, why they were fun for me and not to everyone else, why I liked maths when most people didn't, is different for every single person. I spoke at a school um, near where I'm based in Bristol the other day, um, and two students that were sat next to each other, we we were working groups on this, they both said they liked PE, they both liked sport, in fact they both liked football. But the reason they both liked it was different. One of them liked it because he got to blow off steam. You know, he just got to relax and just chill out. One of them liked it because of the strategy. And so actually, you know, changing people's positions and maybe playing more aggressive, you need to score or more defensive. That's more interesting to me. Just because they both like football doesn't mean they have to have jobs in football. But actually, if you know the reason why you like it, the purpose, what that serves for you, you can follow that. And so, you know, imagine when this person finds out about operations or, or strategic planning, those things will be more interesting to them. It's not about football. It's not about the thing. It's about the reason why. And so purpose is something that we have to look back on hobbies and subjects we liked and then what we like now, why we like what we like now. And we can use that to sort of guess what we might like in the future. Um, so the, the three sort of pillars for engagement, it's really about people the path and the purpose and how we can enable young people to just try those quick, cheap and easy first steps so that they then follow their own path, so that they then have conversations or or start to realise why they like what they like. Uh, That's fascinating, Jay. Uh, I've been scribbling notes down here. You might be uh, seeing this when you're watching this, Jake. Um, So firstly, I love the people, path and purpose thing. I think that there's something so powerful about that. The, the whole concept of purpose, as you know, uh, I've recently chatted to Amy Rowlandson about why. And, and I love this conversation about the big reason why. As you know, I get married soon. So um, this is why now in the next six weeks, I'm really pushing my fitness and running more and doing hit workouts because I've got a big reason why. Because I want to look amazing on my wedding day. Now, three or four months ago, I wasn't really typically motivated because I couldn't be bothered But now I've got that big reason why. But what I like about this is what you're saying is here. It sounds like the evidence is there in in terms of what we're looking at in terms of our hobbies and things. Um, And and particularly in NLP, there's a a presupposition called you have all the resources that you need. It sounds like that the evidence there in terms of our hobbies and the pastime things, there's things that's linking to that, like a thread that's going through that, that is leading to our why. So to share for me, as you know, I've done a huge thing recently about it sounded like a vanity metric putting this podcast into the top 10. Now, to a lot of people, they'd say, well, that sounds a bit, you know, um, um, arrogant or, or vanity. But no, the big reason why is because I, I wholeheartedly believe that this podcast deserves to be shared to more people. And I want it to be found by more people over the world because the value, such as yourself, Jake, uh, and all the amazing guests can share their stories to help unlock the best version themselves and not go through what I went through of just feeling unfulfilled. So I also wrote down here as well about the the asking better questions and there is it seems to be that there is always a step to take and i love that idea when you mentioned about you know a sunday league footballer that you could actually have that conversation and in the world that we're in now six degrees of separation it might be even less than that now it used to be seven degrees and it's like six um but in the world of social media there's, there's someone we know and i don't know if you follow him actually jake there's someone on tiktok that shares um like six degrees of separation they, um, the audience comments a famous person and then he shares how he knows them. And it's just because he's had a photo with someone who then knows someone like that. And I think that's fascinating. But uh, that whole thing, so it sounds like, is there something here as well about beliefs? Something deeper about believing in your own ability? Because I know people, when I was at school, if I'd have said to them, you want to be a football? Yeah, you know, why don't you go speak to that person? Like, oh no, they wouldn't want to speak to me at all. Is there something bigger and deeper with that as well? Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I, I feel like one of the, the, the things that we maybe started angling towards that we changed was about the questions we ask ourselves. Mm. Um, and I think there's a, a big problem at the moment. In fact, I say the problem and, and the reason why this generation and the last generation have started seeing this like drop in engagement is because we're asking the wrong questions. Um, we say to people, what do you want to do? 
because now you can you can do anything you could do anything with your career and they'll say oh i want to be a footballer oh cool okay here's here's what you could do here's your next step that you could take um like speak to someone and then they'll say oh i, I don't know if i want to do that um and then it feels like okay, well, what? I, I don't understand you said you wanted to do this thing and now you're not doing the steps to do that thing it's because we don't ask people why they want to do what they want to do we don't ask people why they want to do what they want to do. We don't ask people why their favorite subjects are their favorite subjects. We tell young people to follow their passion before we know why they're passionate about what they're passionate about. So I challenge people when it comes to these beliefs and maybe seeing those, ah, you said you wanted to do this, but now you're not doing the steps to take to get that. It's the very same as when I was at work. I said I wanted more money. I had opportunities to get more money through promotions. and I turned them down and left. It was nothing to do with the money. It was about the reason why. Uh, and so with that in mind, what if we started asking people why they like their favorite subjects? What if we started p- asking people why they want to do what they say they want to do? What if we started asking young people why they're passionate about what they're passionate about? What might we, what might we learn from them? Mm-hmm. And how might that help us to enable their futures? So it's like for you, yeah. Ricky, if I, if I said, what do you want to do? You said, I want to go to the gym. I could then just go on a complete spree of saying, oh, you should do these workouts. Here are the best gyms. Da, 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 da. Yeah. If I don't know why you want to go to the gym, it's because you want to go for six weeks so you can be ready for your wedding. Yeah. There's no point in me selling you a 20-month gym subscription. Exactly, there? yeah. But once I know why you want to do that, yeah. I can help. Okay, well, okay, here's things you can do in six weeks to look your best. Here's local gyms for you. Is gyms that have the best six six week subscription compared to the cheapest over a year. All of a sudden, your yeah. outcomes are looking so much better, and you'll be much more engaged with them because I know why you want to do it. Yeah, absolutely. So if, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if a young person is saying, "I want to do something," but they're not taking the steps towards that, we need to take a step back and say, "Okay, well, why do they say they want to do that?" Because chances are, if they're not taking the steps that they know they could take, they're not engaged. And why would you not be engaged in something you say you want? Yeah. I'm curious. Oh, that's powerful. Absolutely. So in line with that, then, a question that I was going to ask you, which is what are better questions we can ask ourselves, which you've answered perfectly there, which I guess links to this is, then what do we then need to do differently for the younger generation? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're, we're currently asking young people to make career decisions before they know what they're good at. We're asking young people to follow their passions before they know why they like what they like. And and what this leads to is companies failing to retain young staff because they can't work out what actually motivates them. And the key here is that the young people also don't know what motivates them. So when it comes to better questions, we need to start by finding things that are what I call people-centric rather than work-centric. Okay, you like maths. You could follow a career that's to do with maths. But actually, a better question would be, what is it that's so special about you that means you like maths when 90% of people at school hate it? What, what is so interesting about you that you like going to scouts when most people don't, when most people don't go? Why is, it, why is that about you? And when we change this to people-centric, we're asking young people to look at themselves differently than other people. Okay, why am I interested in making spreadsheets on Microsoft Excel? when most people I know say that that's boring. Um, And what does that mean for me in my future and the things that I might enjoy? And so we're we're taking this step back from the thing, which might be a subject or a hobby or a career, and instead looking at what you and I would call soft skills. If I ask anyone above the age of probably 30 what they're passionate about, their answer will probably be something around soft skills, right? I say, I'm, I'm passionate about leadership. I'm passionate about working with people in the team. I'm passionate about uh, all these things, you know, the, the things that we would call soft skills. If I ask anyone younger what they're passionate about, do you think they would answer something like, I'm passionate about FIFA. <laughs> I'm passionate about music. I'm passionate about books. Mm. When they're older, they might work out through the case of trial and error by luck, or they might not work out at all why they're passionate about what they're passionate about. The trouble is when we ask people, especially young people, follow your passion, they think, I need to follow FIFA. I need to follow books. I need to follow music. Whereas as adults, we we think we're saying, 
follow your passion, follow your leadership, follow communication, follow strategy, because that's the things that we know now we're passionate about. So that's another example of like, okay, here's one thing we can do better. When students are asking you in school, why are we learning this? Break that down to a soft skill. The reason I'm teaching you Pythagoras has nothing to do with Pythagoras. It's actually about problem solving. Because in any career, you're going to have to solve problems on your own. Mm. And that's a skill I need you to have. The reason I'm teaching you Shakespeare Sonnet 140 has got nothing to do with Shakespeare. Instead, it's because I need you to be able to critically analyze text. I need you to be able to communicate difficult ideas. Because in any job, through the rest of your life, you'll have to do those things. Mm. And that applies not only in education, but also if you've got Gen Z kids, that applies if you've got Gen Z employees. Being able to break down why you're doing what you're doing and giving them a reason that is actually meaningful to the person mm. it doesn't have to be some high you know holier than thou purpose just something that's meaningful to me because it's never about the thing it's always about the reason yeah do you know what it's funny i'm thinking of myself that was fantastic thank you by the way jake i'm thinking of myself why didn't i ever ask at school like sir or madam why, why are we we're learning uh, shakespeare today I don't think I would have got the answer of like what you just said so well there. And I, I think it was just probably, uh, you've just got to do it, Ricky. Shut, you know, sit down and shut up, you know, get on with your work. But actually, yeah, you're right. There's something much more deeper than this. This is why, but that was never communicated to me, you know, which then probably could have helped shape the future of going, oh, maybe, so maybe in, uh, so I, I did music as well. You know, uh, music's all about being creativity, you know, and, and those kinds of things are art, you know, that could go, oh, do you know, oh, maybe I might want to start a podcast one day. I, I don't know if podcasts were invented when I was in school. I can't remember. But you kind of get the idea. Yeah, I think you're right. Then it should be something deeper. I love the idea as well that we, we need to ask better questions. So I'm guessing then, you know, obviously for, for even parents or even people who are young listening to this as well, because I know you've got a huge following, what can uh, they start doing now to start um, thinking about their future careers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'll, I'll go back to the pillars and, and maybe give like one thing on each of them. So let's start with people. Every time you have an idea about something you could do or might want to do, think of one person you could suggest that idea to. So I'll, I'll give you an example. I thought that teaching might be something that I wanted to do. Um, now, my first step could be to go to university and studying for four years to be a teacher. I could look for entry-level teaching jobs, but actually what I could do is say to mum and dad, hey, I've thought about teaching. Um, I don't know if it's what I want to do. Do you know any teachers? Oh, yeah. Actually, there's someone that lives at the end of our road that's a teacher. Oh, cool. Can I have a conversation with them? I'd like to know if they like their job, how they got started, what they do on a day-to-day basis. And I'll be honest, Ricky, I did this with probably about a dozen careers that I was like, maybe that's what I want to do over this nine month period, whether it was teaching or um, being like a teaching aide at a primary school or being a corporate trainer um, or or working in telesales, these things, I was like, maybe there's something in there that I think I'd like. How can I find out? And so if you're a young person, you just have all these ideas of like, oh, I could do those things. Find someone that's just one or two steps ahead of you. Usually you can find out through people that are close to you, family, friends, neighbors, teachers. You can find out through what's local to you. Maybe it's a local business, local person that does that. Or through social media. I love LinkedIn, but also Instagram, TikTok. You can find those people. And you can ask them for a bit of advice, five minutes, and you'll be surprised at how many people want to help. So that's one thing you can do with people. With the path, I've spoken about the quick, cheap, and easy things you can do. Every time you have an idea, what is one thing you could do today because often we put these things off to the future oh, i want to be a game designer so i have to go to university i can't go to university today but what is one thing i could do today okay maybe i could watch a youtube tutorial about coding maybe i could install unity or unreal and actually get started making something what is one thing you could do today to get that started and that often is actually more doable than we think it is um, and when we get started we start to realize, oh, actually, uh, I enjoy this bit. Oh, I don't want to keep going on that. It's boring. It's difficult. It's supposed to be difficult. Um, and that leads us to not only developing these skills that I know we could talk about in CVs, um, but also as like volunteering. We get experience doing stuff. We meet people from things we've tried and got started. So always make it as easy as possible to do the next thing, quick, cheap, and easy next step. Um, so that's about the path. That's how you get people started on a path. 
And then with purpose, I think asking these questions about why we like what we like, um, I think you and I, maybe people that are a little bit older as well, have that experience of looking back and saying, oh, I loved football because of the motivational team talks. You know, I'm not interested in standing in the rain on a Sunday morning. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't care about that. But actually, the thing I really liked was the team talks mm. you know, after the game or, or halfway through the game. That's what I liked. When I made a video game, I didn't love coding. I don't want to have a career as a coder. But what I loved was creative autonomy. The fact I could do things when I wanted, how I wanted, without having a boss to tell me it should be different. And I can look back on hobbies and subjects and see that essence through all of them. And it's never about, oh, I like maths, therefore I like one thing and I have to do that forever. It's always, okay, well, what's the trend between my favorite subject of maths and me coaching a football team and me making an app and me making a board game? What is the trend? And it's so abstract. But once you can start to pick out these trends, you get this essence that goes right through and then you can guess what you might like in the future. Yeah. You can say, okay, well, if I like things that involve motivational talking, young people, and me being creatively autonomous, what does that mean I want to do in five years? What job does that mean I want to do that doesn't currently exist yet, that I'll love in 10 or 20 years' time? Mm. And so we have to be able to look back and do a bit, a bit of self-reflection to say, okay, well, why do I like what I like? Why have I liked what I liked? Because it'll be different from your friends and it'll be different from everyone else that enjoys doing that. And it'll be different from the thing that you've always thought it was. And so that, those are just three things that like you could actually do as a young person. Um, they're all like practical. Uh, and what I realized yeah. was that when I was trying to find these things, when I had no idea what I wanted to do, the only answer you could give me was like, oh, take this quiz. Oh, you're an octopus. That means you want a job in HR. <laughs> what does that mean? That's not practical. Yes. This is all the stuff that, like, in yes. a week, you could get started. Over a month, you could build momentum. You'd get skills, meet people, yes. get experience. And, and that's what's most important to getting people engaged in their own futures for their own good. Jay, that was like a, a mic drop, I believe, uh, we say in the, the podcast and the speaking world. Yeah, I t totally agree with you, Jay, because here's the thing, you know, I, I, I don't regret anything in my own kind of experiences. You know, I've been on a huge detour and I think there's something so powerful and magical about the uncertainty of, you know, I will write this book one day, Jay, but I imagine like, you know, like a diversion sign um, when people are driving, people get really frustrated. They go, oh, bloody hell, diversion. Gee, I'm going to be late for work, right? And then all you see is people going, checking the phones, checking the watch, going, oh, this, how long is this going to be me? I better ring in the boss and say I'm going to be late, whatever, right? But actually, how many people on that diversion are actually just enjoying the beautiful countryside? It's not on the motorway and the wonderful things you might see of these little farmhouses or whatever it might be. And actually there's something about enjoying that ride. But um, so I, I don't regret any of that, but I absolutely do as well think that there could have been a quicker route to this by asking those questions. I love that. So, you know, and what it sounds like, Jake, is that the possibilities are endless and there are steps that everyone can take today to find that mm. career they love. So I, I love that. Well, Jake, um, fascinating conversation. I love this. And I think it's so important. Jake for Prime Minister. Wait. No, but I'm, I'm being serious now. But on, on a thing here, I'd love to kind of understand as I ask all the guests on here about unlocking the best version of ourselves, because there is something here about unlocking the best version of ourselves to find a career that we love. I would like to ask, how do you unlock the best version of yourself? Mm. Yeah, good question. So I feel like I now, what, what I do now is very different than what I used to do. Um, well, the, the idea of becoming the best version of myself was a bit weird because I'd never really thought much about self-development. The, the reason I wasn't where I wanted to be in my career was other people's fault. It wasn't to do with me um, because I was amazing. Um, I still am. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's interesting because I think there's a lot of things that were kind of lucky in the sense that, you know, if I didn't know what I wanted to do at school, maybe I wouldn't be doing what I'd want to do now. Um but now one of the things that I like to do is hold myself accountable for the things that I share with young people. So I'll give you an example. One of the things that I say is turn your ideas into action, even if that's really small action. Um, so I have a book that you can see in the background, that blue book. Mm. Every time I have an idea about something I could do, it goes in the book and I have to write down one thing I could do today that like, I actually could do today. Um, so th those could be really weird ideas like, uh, about property or something you know i'm not interested in property but oh, i have an idea that i could do this what's one thing i could do today 
uh, okay, yeah, I could do that. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. And I don't want to give people the impression that, like, I'm this ultra-efficient, hyper-hardworking guy um, with ideas. Some of the ideas just stay in the book, um, and they, those don't have to be ones that I follow. And what's most interesting to me is that young people have those ideas as well. 90% of your ideas will just be ideas. Um, you don't have to follow them all. But actually, how do you find out which ones would work? Uh, and so these steps that I take and some things in that book have gone on to make me like thousands of pounds of part of my business. That was just an idea that I turned into a thing and that thing grew into another thing. And then eventually that's become my TikTok channel, <laughs> which originally was an idea. <laughs> Or it's become something I was like, oh, maybe I could start a podcast. Okay, well, now I'm actually in the process of making one. Maybe I could start um, doing workshops like the this rather than this. Um, so I try to hold myself accountable to what I teach and ask young people to do. Because I feel like I'm in a very fortunate space where I'm young enough to know if things are relevant or difficult that like, I actually will do them or won't do them. Um, and often we ask young people to do stuff and they just don't do it. And we're like, why have they not done that? I'm young enough to be able to feel that. But I'm also, I think, old enough or, or mature enough now that I can see what's going to be most helpful for me going forward that I couldn't see when I was younger. You know, I, I didn't care about my CV when I was younger um, or work experience or volunteering. It just wasn't interesting to me. Um, but now I can see, actually, that those things I could do which will help me in the future. Um, and that's what I try to break down as things like work path tests, quick, cheap, and easy steps which sometimes happen to be volunteering or work experience. Um, but yeah, the, the one thing I do to unlock my potential, I think is really encapsulated in that book and is about turning ideas into things. You know, idea is like you know, one or two atoms pinging around your brain. If you turn that into a conversation or a, like a manifesto or an activity you're going to do, all of a sudden it's something more than that. That's a great answer. Great answer. I actually know someone who's a friend of Steve McDermott who um, got like one of those diving boards in their shower so you can write with water okay. because a lot of um, our best ideas are either when we're asleep and we wake up, put it next to us or even in the shower. So yeah, I love that, Jake. Great, great answer. Thank you. Well, Jake, it's been an absolute pleasure. I I've really enjoyed this conversation. I've loved um, seeing you uh, grow and develop to be this person that you are today and, and I absolutely uh, I'm not just saying this because I'm looking at you, the camera now, but generally I think there's there's a real importance with this, with the future for uh, a lot of people, uh, especially younger people, but even people that are um, probably stuck, you know, or in a job that they hate. There's some wonderful things in this episode. But Jake, if people want to find out more, um, how can they get in touch? And where can they find you? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm most active on LinkedIn, Jake Richings. Um, for those of you that are more younger, um, you can find out on my TikTok, which is Jake underscore Richings. Uh, I post every single day on there something about motivation, careers advice, finding work that you love. Um, but also you can check out my website, jakerichings.com. I'm fortunate to have that surname and no one else has it, so I get that real cheap. Um, <laughs> but it's just like a little a little showcase of my work there as well. Um, but yeah, mo most of what I do is about helping young people to engage in their futures. Sometimes that's education, sometimes that's in the corporate world. Uh, sometimes that's by helping professionals get started on TikTok. You know, it's <laughs> all of these different things that I do. Brilliant. Jay, it's been an absolute pleasure. Good luck inspiring the future generation. And uh, yes, hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. I absolutely love that episode. I feel really inspired from that. And uh, I, I just love that how simple those three little steps there that we can all start doing right now to start finding a career that we love. So whether young people are listening to this, you, a listener, if you're a young person who's in school, ready to go uh, find a career that you love, or even if it's someone who's in a business or in a career that is just completely stuck and you're not loving life right now in your business or in your career, then these are the three things that you can start doing by asking those better questions. Start thinking about the quick, easy and cheap like steps that you can start taking now to find out more about the career that you want to love and start understanding a little bit more deeper about why you like doing those sort of things. So I absolutely love that. So Jake, absolutely fantastic episode. I'm even going to start thinking about some of the things that I do and how I can ask better questions and start understanding that purpose a little bit more deeper of the why I'm actually doing what I'm doing 
So, uh, Jake, thank you so much for that. Uh, don't forget, if you're listening to this episode right now, everyone just check out to the show notes. You can find out more about Jake's website and his details for his TikTok as well. And if you enjoyed the episode, then let me and Jake know by heading over to Apple Podcasts or Podchaser. Link in the show notes. Let us know what you think to this episode. But as always, a huge, huge shout out to the patrons of this podcast. Uh, without you, we wouldn't get this podcast out to the many people around the world. So thank you, Anthony Howe, Sherry Brenton, Steve McDermott, Roy Bar and Chris love it for your continued support it really really does mean a lot and uh, really do appreciate that and if you do want to come along and join the Patreon just head to the link in the show notes and you can join for the price of one pound or even a cup of coffee at three pounds but as always thank you so much for listening to this episode enjoy the rest of your week good luck unlocking the best version of yourself and I'll hopefully join you on another episode very soon goodbye everybody